Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Make sure to like and subscribe for better deception checks next time you play. Maybe. Today we're looking at everyone's favorite Earth-conquering attemptee, Loki. Debuting in Norse mythology hundreds of years ago, we'll be focusing on the Marvel version, popularized by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. With trickery and moral ambiguity, Loki has found a place in all our hearts, presumably for a dagger when we slight him. Loki, brother of Thor. Let's start by setting some of our goals for this build. First, we need illusory magics to fool our enemies. Next, we'll make sure that we've got ample skills with a scepter in case people see through those illusions and want to smash us. Finally, we'll make sure we're a good ruler and our followers will do what we say, because they have to. As always, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll stats if you want, just hit the multi-classing minimums and we're good. Start off with charisma, it's going to be our casting modifier and lying's kind of your thing. Next up, intelligence. You have to be smart to be king even if nobody will let you. Strength after that, Loki isn't a god, but he is a giant. Dexterity next for sleight of hand checks. Constitution is on the lower end. He doesn't particularly enjoy being hit. Finally, we'll dump wisdom. Loki lacks self-control and conviction. Signing up to work for Thanos without following through is a pretty sizable failure in insight. Loki is a frost giant, and furbolgs are giants that disguise themselves and disappear at will, so this will work perfectly for what we're trying to do here. They have plus two wisdom and plus one strength. Also, furbolg magic lets you cast detect magic and disguise self once per day, the former of which shows you magical auras and what school of magic things they belong to. The latter lets you change your face, but it can be seen through with an investigation check against a DC of eight plus your wisdom plus your proficiency bonus. We'll get a better disguise self in a second, save this for emergencies. The hidden step ability lets you use a bonus action to turn invisible for one round once per day. Good for getting out of the fray. Finally, you have a powerful build, letting you carry weight as though you were a large creature. Build your own background with sleight of hand and religion skills. You're the god of trickery, so you've probably met some other deities. We'll start off as a sorcerer, specifically a giant soul sorcerer from an unearthed arcana online. Take arcana and deception proficiencies. You get Jotun resistance, giving you an extra 1 HP per level. There's also the Mark of the Ordening, which gives you spells based off of your giant heritage. You get the Ray of Frost cantrip, which is a ranged spell attack dealing 1d8 cold damage and slows the target down by 10 feet. You also get the first level spell, Armor of Agathis. It gives you 5 temporary hit points and deals 5 cold damage to any creature that hits you with a melee attack. You get 4 other cantrips of your choice. Minor Illusion creates a small illusion that takes up no more than 5 feet and doesn't cast off light, or it can create a sound as loud as a scream. Dancing Lights creates 4 torch-like lights if you want to augment that illusion with a little bit of lighting. Prestidigitation lets you do a bunch of small magical things like light torches, cool beverages, there's a whole list of it in the player's handbook, check it out. Finally, Mage Hand creates a magic hand that can lift 5 pound things or activate non-magical items. Reverse level spells, Disguise Self works like it did for the Firbolg, but when cast as a sorcerer spell, uses your charisma instead of your wisdom, which is better for you. Silent Image creates an illusory image that fits in a 15 foot cube. It can't make any sound, but Minor Illusion isn't concentration, so combine these for some more convincing tricks. Creatures can make an investigation check to see through this. The DC is 8, plus your charisma modifier, plus your proficiency bonus. Second level sorcerers get sorcery points that they can use to recover spell slots. You also learn another spell. Magic Missile shoots three bolts that automatically hit a target in their 120 foot range, and they deal 1d4 plus 1 force damage each. Just because they can't hit you doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to hit them, right? Third level sorcerers get meta magic, letting you spend your sorcery points to augment your spells. Subtle spell lets you cast a spell without using verbal or somatic components. Extended spell doubles the spell's duration so your illusions can stay up longer. For your spell, Misty Step lets you teleport up to 30 feet away as a bonus action. You also get Hold Person from your giant soul, letting you force a wisdom save on a humanoid if they fail they're paralyzed for up to a minute depending on your concentration. They can also reroll saves at the end of their turns. Fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement or a feat and will take the actor feat. It gives you plus one charisma, advantage on deception, and performance checks to pretend you're someone else, and you can mimic someone's speech after hearing them talk for a minute. I imagine this is more effective if you're impersonating your adopted father. For your spell, grab suggestion. This lets you give someone a simple order that isn't directly harmful. They make a wisdom save. If they fail, they have to try and complete that task for the next eight hours hours or until you lose concentration. If they complete the task or your party attacks them, it's over. I suggest doing something like walk 10 miles east. Keep in mind creatures that can't be charmed are immune to this spell. 
We'll cross over to another class now and take a level in Paladin, giving us medium armor proficiency and proficiency with a spear. That deals 1d6 one-handed or 1d8 two-handed. You also have Divine Sense, which lets you sense Fey, Fiends, or Celestials within 60 feet of you, an amount of times equal to your Charisma modifier per long rest. Finally, you've got Lay on Hands, which lets you heal creatures an amount equal to five times your Paladin level per long rest. Second level Paladins get a Fighting Style. I'd take Defense for plus one to your AC while you're wearing armor. You can also learn a number of spells from the Paladin spell list, equal to your charisma modifier plus half your paladin level our best spells will come next level but bless gives three creatures of your choice an extra d4 for attack rolls and saving throws for up to 10 minutes if you maintain concentration shield of faith increases the target's ac by two for the same amount of time also concentration command is similar to suggestion it's a wisdom save but only lasts one round so use it to make someone lay down on the floor or throw away their weapon finally you have divine smite which lets you add radiant damage to a melee weapon attack by spending spell level it's 2d8 for a first level slot and an extra d8 for every level above the first since you're mixing spell casters you have access to spell slots equal to your multi-caster level check out page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out what you have at any given level third level paladins can make a sacred oath or in your case break one breaking your oath is a very serious thing but if your god was promising you a seat on the throne of asgard then give it to your dumb brother you might take the oath of treachery you get some extra spells charm person charms a humanoid for up to an hour if they fail their wisdom save expeditious retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes both of these are concentration so one at a time more importantly, you can channel divinity once per long rest and have two options. Contra Duplicate creates an illusory copy of yourself. You can cast spells through it and get advantage on melee attacks if you and it are within five feet of the thing you're attacking. It lasts for up to a minute and you have to roll concentration saves if you get hit to maintain it. The other option is Poison Strike, which adds poison damage to a weapon you're holding equal to 2d10 plus your paladin level or 20 plus your paladin level if you have advantage on the attack. You're also immune to disease thanks to divine health, which is nice. Four level paladins get an ability score improvement or a feat. I'm gonna recommend the Spear Mastery feat from an Unearthed Arcana, find it online. It adds one to attack and damage rolls you make with a spear, bumps up the damage die to d8s one-handed and d10s two-handed. You can prepare an attack against a creature within 20 feet of you. If they come into your range, you get to make an attack that deals double damage as a reaction, and you can use your bonus action to double its range up to 10 feet. Fifth level paladins get an extra attack and can learn second level spells. Magic weapon lets you add one to attack and damage rolls with a weapon and makes it a magical in terms of overcoming resistances. From your Oath of Treachery, you get invisibility, which makes you or a creature you touch invisible for up to an hour unless you cast a spell or make an attack mirror image creates three illusory duplicates of yourself when someone attacks you roll a d20 if you have three duplicates a six or higher means that they hit a duplicate for two duplicates it's eight or higher and for one it's 11 or higher they have an ac equal to 10 plus your dex modifier and disappear after being hit we'll head back to sorcerer now fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells major image creates an illusion that fits in a 20 foot cube you can make it smell or sound different as well as always it will be exposed as a fake if something moves through through it or if a creature makes a successful investigation check against your casting DC. Sixth level giant souls get the Soul of Lost Austria, which gives you bonuses when you cast a spell from the Mark of Ordning. For you, that means HP equal to your constitution modifier, minimum of one, which for you is one. For your spell, take Counterspell. It lets you shut down spells of third level or lower automatically as a reaction, and spells of higher levels with a charisma check equal to 10 plus that spell's level, which is useful if your brother likes throwing lightning bolts at you. Seventh level sorcerers can learn fourth level spells. Polymorph transforms a creature into a beast of challenge rating equal to or lower than its current challenge rating or level. It has that creature's statistics or hit points, and when it runs out of hit points, it goes back to the original form with the amount of health it had originally. Last up to an hour or until you lose concentration. You're currently level 11, so you can make yourself a Tyrannosaurus Rex, or you can make the enemy a rat that can't hurt you, though they can make a wisdom save to avoid this. 8th level sorcerers get an ability score improvement, and we need charisma like it's nobody's business. Bump that up right away. You can also learn another spell. Confusion forces a wisdom save on creatures in a 10-foot radius. Failing that, they have to roll 1d10 on their turns. A 1 makes them use their action and movement to move in a random direction. From 2 to 6, they just do nothing. From 7 to 8, they must attack a random creature within melee range, and from 9 to 10, they get to act normally. This lasts for up to a minute or until they make the save, they reroll again at the end of each turn. 9th level sorcerers can learn 5th level spells. Dominate person gives you full control over someone for up to a minute, provided you maintain concentration and they don't make their wisdom save, which they can reroll at the end of each turn or whenever they take damage. 
10th level sorcerers can take another meta magic ability. Distance spell doubles the range of a spell for your spell grab seeming. It's like disguise cell for up to 8 creatures and it lasts for 8 hours. This doesn't require concentration, you can change their appearance into something of a similar size and the amount of limbs, I love that it specifies that, if they don't want to change their appearance they can resist with a charisma save. 11th level sorcerers can learn 6th level spells, check out mass suggestion. It's like the 2nd level spell suggestion but works on up to 12 creatures and lasts 24 hours. Need a long rest but you're surrounded by enemies? Make them dig a well 100 feet down and take a nap while they take points of exhaustion. As long as they don't take damage, they'll continue until the spell is done. 12th level sorcerers get an ability score improvement, cap your charisma. There are no new spells at this level, but at this point it might be a reasonable place to cap the build. I'm not a reasonable person though. 13th level sorcerers can learn 7th level spells, but I'm actually going to go back and grab hold monster from 5th level. It's hold person without the humanoid restriction, so you can hold a dragon if it fails the save. 14th level giant soul sorcerers get rage of fallen Astoria, and can I just say, no subclass comes close to this for the coolest ability names. With this, you can increase your size by one category for one minute when you expend a spell slot. After that, you get temporary HP equal to your sorcerer level, five extra feet of movement, five extra feet of reach, and plus one damage to your melee attacks. You can do this once per long rest. It's not something I've seen Loki do, but it is something I'd like to see Loki do. Catstone is going to be 15th level of sorcerer, giving us knowledge of 8th level spells. Dominate monster is like dominate person, but for any creature, and it lasts for an hour. It makes a wisdom save, failing that it's yours for an hour or until it takes damage or real rolls the save or you lose concentration. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, you have so many options for controlling creatures, it's borderline ridiculous. Second, your illusions can potentially shut down fights before they even start, unless people are willing to bluff whatever giant monster you're making them see. Finally, you're pretty capable in melee combat, with spells that augment yourself and a solid weapon with an extra attack. However, you're definitely going to need to protect yourself because you're barely over 100 total HP. You're in power word kill range after one solid hit, so try and get in the inner circle of anyone with a melt stick. Next, illusions are either really good or really bad. All of them fail to hold up on physical inspection, not to mention anyone you interact with more than once will likely grow suspect of spectacular images you're conjuring. Finally, your main source of damage is tricking others into fighting for you, and if they have a substantial wisdom score, you're probably going to be out of luck. Thankfully, good guys tend not to kill, they'll just put you in jail, and you are specifically equipped to break out. Control your enemies, trick your rivals, and stab anything that resists your tricks. Just be wary not to disappoint the wrong people, eventually your luck might run out. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video subscribe for more, we make new builds every week and get this video to 30 likes and I'll write up a new villain video. I also wanted to announce we're doing a little special something right before Endgame comes out so check back at the end of April for that.